This video is sponsored by you. Links to support the channel are in the description, along with the Discord server. Okay, so uh, I might have gotten a little bit into Wawa lately, just a tad. And with the rerun here, there's no better time to talk about our favorite weak-willed little fox daughter or wife, or maybe both. Don't worry, she's like 45 or something. We like older women. Please understand, the editing will be extremely lax in this video, as it is long and I don't have much time to make it before the Huawei rerun. I'm gonna be explaining stuff in this video as if you're 5 years old, keeping the use of graphs to a minimum. I can't count the times I checked a guide for a character, meaning to learn if they are good or not, only to get bukakied by math. Let's talk about her general game plan. All the info dump in this video won't be any useful if you don't actually know how to play her generally. Huo may be an abundance character, but the truth is that you should be playing her as a harmony character that just so happens to have insane healing as well. This is the one core principle behind Huo Huo gameplay, so the priority when building and playing her goes to her buffs and her utility, not her heals. This roughly translates to her ultimate being the most important part of her kit. Mind you, this doesn't mean the ultimate is the only important part of her kit. Her clans and the insane out of turn heals are amazing as well. Another very important thing to note about her playstyle is that while yes, she's a sustain unit, she's not like Fushuan or Aventurin. Wowo isn't capable of preventing damage, rather she heals it. It doesn't take a star railing PhD to realize that preventing damage is inherently always superior to healing it. If you want prevention, you use the other Shanzo Alliance Lolibaba. Though in this video I will be assuming that you are hell-bent on using Huohuo in your team. So uh, I won't be saying stuff like, oh, go use this other unit instead. You know, beside just now. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm going to assume you're a based Huohuo simp and refuse to take her off your team. And finally, Huo Huo requires a good amount of effort to be used at her fullest compared to other sustains, where you just press their skills every three turns and call it a day. You're gonna need to use that smooth brain of yours a little bit. Now, let's go in order and take one step at a time. Here's her basic attack. It doesn't do anything special at all, and is only here to generate skill points. You could keep this at level 1 and nothing of importance would be lost. Her skill actually does a good bit of things. First, it cleanses one debuff from the selected target, including crowd control debuffs like Freeze and the Penacony Sleep. After that, she heals them for a good amount. She also heals the two adjacent units beside your target. Lastly, it makes Wawa gain two stacks of Divine Provision, which is what her talent revolves around. She loses one stack of it at the start of her own turn. When she has Divine Provision and it's an ally's turn, they will have one debuff cleansed and their HP healed. Not only that, every ally with less than half health will also receive healing. 
This uh, can heal units twice if the unit that's currently having their turn also has their HP below 50%. Plus, uh, this uh, triggers at the start of the turn, cleansing any DOT before it gets to deal damage, and it also removes things like Freeze and the Penacony's Normie before it takes effect. You can now see what was incredible potential for out of turn healing, and as a mother of 10. You use her skill and now everyone gets free life support and debuff cleansing for two of her own turns. It is important to note though that the cleansing can only trigger six times, this count resetting with each skill activation. So you can't build Wawa to be turbo slow so the team gets a shit ton of cleanses. With all this established, Wawa's best team position is either 1 or 4, in other words, at the edges. Ideally, you want to trigger her skill to position 3 if she's in 1, or position 2 if she's in 4, so she heals the entire team beside herself. Believe me, with the amount of HP we'll be giving Wawa, she can very well survive off the out of turn healing. Which is uh, technically not out of turn since it's her own turn when it triggers, but uh, you get the point. Finally, we have her technique and her ultimate. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, her technique is ass. It doesn't really synergize with uh, anything, and its effect is pretty negligible. Wawa will cause your enemies to run away from a shy meek little Foxian for 10 seconds, reducing all of their attacks by 25% for 2 turns. This can be useful, as we established at the start, Wawa isn't capable of preventing damage, so having this little safety net for the first 2 turns can be nice. But uh, this is completely useless in longer fights. If Wawa can't keep your team alive past turn 2 when the technique debuff wears off, there's no point surviving a little better at the start in the first place. Lastly, her ultimate, which I believe to be the most important part of her kit, as everything about how you build Wawa revolves around it. Wawa regenerates 20% of every ally's max energy, and increases their attack by a fat 40% for two turns. Ignoring the fact the ultimate animation has nothing to do with its actual effect, this is amazing. When playing her, you want your ultimate to be up as much as possible to keep your team buffed and fed like a mama bird. Though you may have noticed an issue with her kit in general, she gets two stacks of divine provision. Ideally, you want to be using her skills to keep it up constantly and pay the hefty 140 cost of her ultimate, which means Wawa is skill point neutral. One turn you're using the basic attack, gaining one skill point. The next turn you use her skill, losing one skill point. The next you gain another, and so on. In a lot of teams, this is horrible. You don't want your sustain to be SP neutral. So, at E0, her ideal SP positive rotation would be one skill and two basics. Assuming you have her signature at S1 or post op at S4, you can get a 4 turn rotation by running her both SP neutrally and positively. The difference is that by running her SP positively, you'll have one turn of downtime on her talent. In other words, you should always run her SP positively by doing two basics and one skill. And then, if your team f dies because of that one turn of downtime, that's your cue to run her SP neutrally and get full uptime on that talent. After all, having more SP and dealing more damage doesn't matter if your units just flop on the floor, you know? 
Okay, but uh, at that point, uh, just uh, use Fushuani instead. Shut the fuck up! Keep in mind, uh, Wobo using her ultimate uh, plus uh, the designated ally using a basic attack can provide more energy than that ally using only a skill can. Meaning you could be saving skill points elsewhere by other allies not using them, since Wopo's ultimate makes up for the energy loss. Alternatively, you can use Lisara's tech for a 3 turn alt rotation while playing her SP neutrally. Here's the graph she made, I can't be asked to remake it. Though uh, there are uh, some specifications with this. First, uh, reaching these uh, kinda speeds uh, is f***ing absurd, and will take you 5000 years in the relic mines. Second, it's not uh, actually uh, a 3 turn rotation. Basically, uh, the concept is that Wowo acts 4 times in between 3 actions of your DPS. So, even if it is still a 4 turn rotation, in effect it'll be the same as a 3 turn rotation. Third, a lot of these require her to be running the Eagle set, which, as we'll discuss later, is at best a meme set for specific challenge clears like the ones Lizara does. Fourth, this requires her to be run SP neutrally, which, as we established, can be quite the hassle for a lot of teams. Or, if you're crazy enough, just crazy enough that it might work, you can achieve the forbidden true 3 turn rotation jutsu by using her skill every single turn, making Wowo obscenely SP negative, and essentially nullifying every benefit that might come from having her ultimate every 3 turns. Don't actually do this. Let's move on to her traces. The trace priority is ultimate, then skill or talent, and then basic attack, if you even want to upgrade it at all. Fearful to act. When battle starts, Wowo gains divine provision, lasting for one turn. You may have noticed the issue with this, and that is that Wowo will usually be acting first, as I'll explain later when we talk about stats, meaning this singular stack will vanish immediately as soon as the battle starts. In effect, this trace literally does nothing. The Cursed One. The chance to resist crowd control debuffs is increased by 35%. This is just plainly good, not much to say. Since you want to charge her ultimate, you want her to be acting constantly, and being less affected by crowd control is self-evidently useful to that purpose. Stress reaction to horror. When her talent is triggered to heal allies, Wowo regenerates one energy. This is not a lot, but it quickly adds up. This works on her own turns, it works on overheal, and it works with the 50% and below heal. This means she will get 1 to 2 energy every single turn while her talent is up. Her trace bonuses are plus 28% HP, plus 18% effect res, and plus 5 speed. These are really great, you'll see why when we talk about stats. Moving on, we have her Eidolons. Are they worth it? Well, her important Eidolons are E1, E2, and E6, with the best one being E6 by far. Should you go for E6? Probably not. But hey, if you're a whale anyways and you're gonna spend that money, it's not a bad investment. In order, E1 makes her SP positive. She can hold one extra stack of Divine Provision, meaning the two basics, one skill rotation now has full talent uptime, getting you the best of both worlds and completely erasing the need for the SP neutral rotation. 
In addition to that, she also buffs the entire team's speed by 12% whenever she has this buff active, which ideally is always. E2 gives her two revives if she possesses Divine Provision. This is amazing on paper, but falls into the common pitfall that every revive effect in video games does. Ideally, you are not planning to die in the first place, you know? So having an effect for a situation that you shouldn't be getting in in the first place is kinda eh. On the other hand, though, as I established pretty extensively by now, Huo Huo does not prevent damage, she can only heal it back. So having two revives in your back pocket can be really useful if things get out of hand. This is not a bad Eidolon at all. What are bad Eidolons are E3, E4 and E5. E3 and E5 increase the level cap for her ultimate, talent, skill and basic attack, increasing each one's effect by like 2%, or 0.3% in the talent's case. This is completely non-consequential and pure filler until you get to E6. E4 simply increases the amount healed by her skill and talent depending on how low the ally's HP is. As Wowo has already so much out of turn healing, and her healing capabilities aren't lacking at all, this is the equivalent of that one picture of the guy pouring water on himself while swimming in a pool. Though, if you have this Eidolon, you can afford to not reach the HP benchmarks for Endgame that we're gonna discuss later, as she's gonna have a lot more healing than usual. And finally, E6. When she heals someone, she increases their attack by 50% for two turns. What the f- Run that by me again? This is literally better than her ultimate. This is f absurd. This is on par with Robin's skill. Why does Wowo get Robin's skill? Not only that, it's permanently active as it triggers with the out of turn heals. So, since at this point you have E1, which means Divine Provision has a 100% uptime, this fat 50% attack buff to the entire team is also permanently active. Does this mean it's worth it for you to go through the endless gacha gauntlet of torment and wallet draining for this? No, not at all, no. But if you are a whale anyway, this is insane and a must have. Here's her base stats without relics. Oh my god, we're finally getting into the actually building her section. She boasts 1358 HP, 601 attack, 509 defense, 98 speed, and 140 energy cost. You can completely ignore the attack stat as it does absolutely nothing for her despite being kinda decent, and defense is just kinda nice to have. Which leaves us with three important stats, HP, energy cost, and speed. HP is really important because essentially everything in Hobo's kit scales off of it. Ideally, you want this to be pretty high so that her heals are better. Her energy cost at release was the highest in the game. It got defroned now, but this is still really high, which is not a good thing for a unit that wants to use her ultimate as much as possible. Speed is the most important stat for Huo As I said at the beginning, you need to play her like a harmony character, and optimally your little Foxian should be on par with a Bugatti. More speed means more turns, which means more energy, which means more ultimates, which means more buffs. 
While she has some speed traces, getting her up to 103, it isn't super good for what we need out of her. Regarding endgame stat goals, this is what you should aim for. HP should be from 5500 to 6400, defense should be 800 or more, energy regen should be 19.44%, which just means having it on the link rope, and speed should go from 134 to 143 to 161. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, you need 134 speed to play her at minimum, ideally 143, if you get lucky 161. Though reaching 161 through in-combat buffs rather than substats is also ideal. Generally, if she's the fastest in the team by a good margin, you're good to go. For the stats, you want outgoing healing or HP on the body. If you can reach the endgame HP benchmark without an HP chest, then outgoing healing is better. Speed is literally mandatory on the boots, HP is best for the planar sphere, and energy regen rate is also obligatory on the link rope. If you don't get speed on the boots and energy regen on the link rope, don't even bother. For the substats, speed is the only one that matters, but HP% percent is also really great. Let's talk about the actual relic sets. In my opinion, there is 6 possible sets that range from great to viable to dubious. We have the following, in no particular order. 2-piece messenger traversing hackerspace, plus 2-piece passerby of wandering cloud, providing 6% more speed and 10% more outgoing healing, which are both very needed. 4-piece passerby, providing 10% more outgoing healing and 1 extra skill point at the start of the battle. This is especially useful if you run her with inhibitor lunae as an energy battery. 4-piece messenger, providing 6% more speed and 12% even more speed to the entire team when she uses her ultimate. 2-piece longevous disciple plus 2-piece passerby, providing 12% more HP, which as we established is good since she scales everything off that and 10% more outgoing healing. 2-piece Disciple plus 2-piece Messenger. Unless you really can't reach the HP benchmarks or you have crazy substats, I wouldn't recommend this. Once War War reaches the endgame HP threshold of around 6000, she values outgoing healing a lot more compared to max HP. And finally, if you're a complete fucking crackhead and you have insane, utterly unreal substats, you can run 4-piece Eagle of Twilight Line. This increases her wind damage by 10%, which is completely f***ing worthless on the Wawa, but also advances her action forward by 25% when using her ultimate. Hear me out, assuming you reach 161 speed and above, and you also have around 7000 to 8000 HP to cover for the lack of outgoing healing, you could unironically run this to make your war war reach speeds on par with Gojo Satoru during his domain expansion. For the planner sets, we have a little less options. We could go for Fleet of the Ageless, increasing max HP by 12% and all allies attack by 8% when her speed reaches 120. This is generally her best planner set, providing a much needed max HP boost and buffing the entire team by having her just be present. Broken Kill is the same, but focusing on effect res instead, and buffing the team's crit damage. 
This is a little worse since Wawa doesn't care too much about effect res, especially when her traces already cover for it. Penacony Land of the Dreams increases her regeneration rate by 5%, and increases the damage of all other wind allies by 10%. The regeneration rate buff could be good in a vacuum, but you're not really playing WoW with anyone else of a wind element beside Black Swan to actually use this with. However, with Fei Xiao on the horizon, it's possible WoW might finally have a good wind DPS to synergize this planar set with. So, uh, keep it in the back of your mind for Fei Xiao's release. Finally, we have Springflea Von Wach, giving her 5% energy regeneration and advancing her action by 40% at the start of the battle. This sounds incredible on paper, until you realize that WoWo will be built like a Ferrari anyway, so the 40% advance at the start of the battle doesn't do anything for her, as she'll be acting first either way. So 5% energy regeneration with no other effect isn't very good compared to other options like Fleet of the Ageless, and considering most of her energy regen will come from the Light Cone. And about Light Cones, there is some great options like Shared Feeling, Time Waits for No One, Hey Over Here, Perfect Timing, and Quid Quo Pro. But in reality, it comes down to just two of them, those being Post-Op Conversation at S4 and her signature Night of Fright. No, I don't know why she's holding a box cutter, that's out of the scope of this review. Yes, sure, the other light cones give out nice little benefits, like more HP, outgoing healing, effect res, additional damage, a bit of energy scattered about, but I feel at this point we've established what was own energy regeneration is the most important thing here which leaves us with those two light cones. Well, if you only care about the energy regeneration and don't give a fuck about her buff, then Shared Feeling and Quid Quo Pro could be worth considering as well. But even then, I still prefer Post Op and Night of Fright. Post Op is super simple. For Huawei's purposes, all it does is increase her energy regeneration rate from 8% at S1 to 16% at S5. Meanwhile, Night of Fright does a bit more. It increases her energy regeneration rate from 12% to 20%. It also heals the ally with the lowest HP in the team from 10% to 14% of their max HP when Huawei uses her ultimate. And finally, it gives healed allies an attack buff ranging from 2.4% to 4%. The only effect that really matters is the energy regeneration. The heal is really good, but again, it's like the guy pouring water on himself while swimming in a pool. Wawo does not struggle with out-of-turn healing, or healing in general. Plus, the attack buff is a complete non-factor. Though, this out-of-turn heal is a bit different from the other ones. The other ones trigger on your character's turns. Meanwhile, this one is tied to the ultimate, which means you can trigger it in between enemy turns. In the end, it comes down to which light cone has the better superimposition. If your post-op is S3 or below, then Night of Fright is better. If your post-op is S4 or S5, then post-op is better. If your Night of Fright is somehow S3 or above, then Night of Fright is better. For most people, I assume you'll have post-op at S4 or above, and Night of Fright at S1 or S2 if you get really lucky. 
In short, her signature is a luxury option, unless you really invest into these superimpositions, or if you somehow don't have post-op at S4. Which I don't, by the way, I don't know how that happened, I've been playing since launch week. There is an important thing to mention about Night of Fright, though, and that is that it's amazing on other healers. Did you know it's the best light cone for every other Abundance character, except Luosha and, I assume, Lingsha whenever she releases? Yes, it's the best light cone even for Bailu, which is very ironic how for Huo Huo herself it is dubious if her own signature is the best option, but for literally almost everyone else it is the undisputed best option. Now, on to her teams. There is four obvious options for Huo Huo which are Inhibitor Lunae, Jing Liu, Argenti, and a D.O.T. team. D.O.T. is probably Huo Huo's best team currently. She's the best sustain for Kafka and Black Swan, providing an attack buff, energy, and speed at E1. Meaning that despite being surrounded by hot mummies, Huo Huo is the one who takes care of them. And don't worry, you can activate her ultimate after Kafka's or Black Swans. According to the tests this Reddit user ran, the OT damage appears to be calculated at the time of proc, not at the time of application. This means as long as Wokwo's buff is up while the DOT triggers, she'll be buffing it. Next, we have all the ultimate reliant characters. Obviously, along with Ting Yun, Huo Huo is their best friend. So far, they are the only two energy battery characters. They can create a sort of energy loop when paired together, where her ultimate chains into Ting Yun's. Additionally, having Huo Huo in the team avoids having Ting Yun waste her energy on someone who has their ultimate almost charged, as Huo Huo can fill in that smaller amount, and then you can take full advantage of Ting Yun's bigger energy refill. For Argenti, he has an insane ultimate cost, so obviously he really wants Huo Huo. Huo Huo's recharge is percentage-based, which means Argenti gains the most out of it. For Inhibitor Lunae, well, he needs a lot of ultimates to gain Squama Sacrosanta, but I will admit, if you have a Sparkle babysitting him, this is largely unnecessary to the point you can avoid using Huo Huo completely. But who said you can't use all three together, right? One of Inhibitor Lunae's best teams is himself, Sparkle, Ting Yun, and Huo Huo. For Jing Liu, she will actually be able to stay in her enhanced state for like one or two more turns depending on the amount of ultimates and extra energy Ting Yun and Huo Huo will be able to give her. For Jing Yuan, I don't know why you're using Jing Yuan in 2024, but for him she's also great. He wants to ult very often to build up Lightning Lord stacks, and Huo Huo can help with that. Huo Huo also synergizes a bit with Robin. With her, Robin is able to have a constant uptime on her ultimate. Then we have Topaz. Having Huo Huo on her team will lead to more ultimates and thusly more enhanced Nambi attacks. Robin is generally way better for her, but again, who said you can't use all three together, right? 
Lastly, oddly enough, you can run her with Bootil. You might be wondering, hold on Buster, aren't Gallagher or Aventurin way better for Bootil? And that is very true. But again, we're assuming you're hellbent on using Huohuo because your cock points to her like a compass. And you can use her with Bootil to great effect. He needs his ultimate to implant physical weakness, and she gives energy along with a great buff. It is worth to note though, in this case, you won't be using Ting Yun. Butil needs his ultimate, sure, but not so much that slotting in Ting Yun is worth it. Besides, he has built-in energy regeneration with his traces. The best Bootil Wowo team would be him, Ruan, HMC, and Wowo. Just in general, anyone that vaguely benefits from activating their ultimate will also vaguely benefit from having Wowo there. Anyway, let's say you're poor as hell, and for some reason Huohuo is your first 5-star and you have nobody else. For the time being, Queen Ifen is a good synergy along with Sushuan and... Sushuan... Why did I say Sushuan? For the time being, Queen Ifen is a good synergy, along with Su Shang and Sampo. But if you're really starved for options, I guess Hook and QQ also moderately function with Huo Huo. Even if Qing Yue would much rather have someone like Fu or Luo Cha. About who you shouldn't use her with, I can think of a few characters. Acheron doesn't gain anything from her energy regeneration, as her ultimate doesn't work like that. You should only use Huohuo with Acheron if you're also running Kafka and Black Swan in the same team. There is an argument to be made that perhaps running Fushuan with the trend light cone is better, as it is one extra stack of DOT. But I will argue that Wowo massively helping half the team and giving Acheron a 40% attack buff is more valuable. Though uh, Aventurin with the trend light cone is easily the best option anyway. Firefly would need Huohuo since her ultimate cost is equivalent with buying a house, but her skill makes any need for energy regen from others null. Gallagher is just better for all your Firefly needs, or Ling Sha if she really is the Gallagher power creep as we speculate. Ironically, both of these characters benefit immensely from activating their ultimates, which should make them amazing with Huohuo, but due to other mechanics in their kits, it ends up not working out. Yunli, aka the dedicated fit character, the unit in the same half of 2.4, is quite the funny case. At first glance, she doesn't seem to benefit from Huohuo at all. Her ultimate is super good, and you want it up as much as possible, but she has built-in energy regeneration by getting hit. Getting hit gives 5 to 25 energy depending on the hit. Plus the 15 on top from her talent, she'll get her ultimate back in 3 to 2 hits. Keep in mind that her 120 energy cost is actually just 60, since she can store 2 ultimate charges, and that she's part of the path with the highest aggro in the game. Of course, this is on top of her own attacks and skills, so an energy battery on top of all that is just superfluous. 
However, funny thing is that despite all this, Wopo still ends up being Yunli's best sustain. Wopo gives her a 40% attack buff, and even if the percent difference isn't actually that much, you don't want a preservation with her, since you want Yunli to have the highest chance possible to get hit. Also, as it turns out, energy batteries are amazing on Yunli, actually. An important thing with Yunli is that, as I said, she's the first character able to store ultimate charges, meaning overcharging is not an issue. Also, while she has a really low energy cost and great energy regeneration on her own, her ultimate only lasts one turn, so you really damn near want it up at all times, which means slotting in Ting Yun as well is a good idea. While Yun Li is very energy regeneration self-sufficient on paper, the fact she can store ultimate charges and the fact you want her ultimate up f always makes her one of the best characters to use energy batteries with. So, uh, since they're in the same half of the same update, which one is more worthwhile to roll? Honestly, uh, it's a toss-up, and depends on what you want. Both units are very versatile with their teams. Ideally, you want both since they synergize best with each other, but Huohuo works in a bunch of teams in the same way that Yunli works with a bunch of other sustains as well. So, really, if you want a DPS, roll Yunli, if you want a sustain, roll Huohuo. So, to conclude with one final question, how future-proofed is Huohuo exactly? I don't think we'll have to worry about a direct power creep anytime soon, but I would still call her future viability into question, though it's nothing certain and depends on the direction the game is going. With Bootil having energy regen on his traces, Firefly giving herself 60% of her energy with her skill, and Yunli energy batterying for herself, it's possible the game is moving towards a direction where units will be able to self-sufficiently regenerate energy for themselves. This inherently makes energy battery characters less useful, and would leave Huohuo with just her buffs, which the actual harmony units are better at. Of course, this is speculation, and it's possible Fei Xiao or someone else in the future will turn out to be an extremely ultimate-reliant character begging for energy batteries. We can't know that yet. Though, even with all this, Wovo still is the best sustain for Yunli and a great option for Butil. Also, since she's the only sustain that can pass as a harmony unit, for now, she often becomes the best healer by process of elimination. Also keep in mind that support roles are the hardest to power creep. For example, Ting Yun and Pella are still relevant, while Fushuan has been a cheat code for this game for the past 11 updates. So, I really doubt that Wowo will ever get directly power crept. So, in conclusion, I wouldn't worry too much about her future proofing. So, to wrap up this way too long video, let's list her pros and cons. For the pros, we have great healing and sustain, incredible debuff cleansing, constant out of turn healing, a 40% attack buff to the entire team, being an energy battery based off percentage for the entire team, having ways to restore her own energy through her talent thanks to her traces, with E1 buffing the entire team's speed and becoming SP positive, with E2 getting two revives, with E6 
just getting Robin's skill for some reason, currently being the best sustain for the OT teams, currently being the best sustain for a lot of ultimate reliant characters, and finally being a top tier waifu, up there with the greats like Gummy Arknights. For the cons, we have a lot more effort to use compared to other sustains, a lot more difficult to just slap into any team compared to other sustains, a very high energy cost, being SP neutral at E0, not being able to prevent damage, rather only healing it, which is inherently worse compared to someone like Fu or Aventurin. Not being able to be played with two of the top DPS units in the game right now, those being Acheron and Firefly, which is just a shame. And finally, people will call you a pedophile on Twitter for liking her as anything beyond a daughter. And that's all I wanted to say. Max out your wow Bye! Wow, that was long. Anyway, hi, thank you for watching. You're probably one of three people who made it here. Special thank you to the members and Patreons on screen now, and in particular my Pookies, Como to Brazil, Mike Reguera, Zephyrinix, The Crazy Lord, New Takoyaki, Nubpo, Lord Takio, Good Old Leon, Maxio Says, and Chromechan but JJF. Now I am gonna go put my Huo Huo keychain inside a glass jar.